Last month, Tumbleweed launched this here bike, which is the Stargazer, to accompany their go anywhere, do anything prospector. The company now has that flat bar prospector and this drop bar mountain bike. But is there a need for more drop bar adventure centric mountain bikes on the market? Well, in the world of the pandemic, absolutely, because it's really hard to get bikes in the first place. But this bike right here is a little different. It's super, super fun, and it's definitely more mountain bike than drop bar gravel bike. Let's get into it. So before I jump into my review, I just wanted to let you all know that Logan Watts did a really great written review on the Tumbleweed Stargazer. And he basically covered everything and maybe a little bit more than I even cover in this video review. He talked about everything from the components, how it rode, uh, how it rode while bike packing, and of course he compared a handful of bikes within this same category. So if you're interested in checking out that written review, you can click on this card right here and it's also linked below. And that reminds me, if you like what you see on bikepacking.com, our reviews, our routes, everything, and if you like what you see in these videos, consider joining the Bikepacking Collective. The Bikepacking Collective helps support our website, everything you see on our YouTube channel, and of course, our Bikepacking Journal, which is our biannual print publication. For more information, details, and to sign up, you can click on the link below. The Prospector is made out of a proprietary heat-treated, oversized, triple and quadruple butted chromoly steel. So the frame does come with internal gusseting and I didn't actually know what that was until I looked it up. But gusseting in general is basically an overbuilt area. In this case, it's in the head tube where the head tube meets the top tube and this down tube here. You'll see external gusseting on quite a few bikes. With the Stargazer here, you know it's stronger in that region, but it's super clean and you don't see it, which I think makes this bike look even better. Unlike the Prospector, this rear end is static. So there's no adjustable dropouts. There's no eccentric bottom bracket, which means you can't run a roll off or a single speed system without an aftermarket tensioner. The frame does come with a 73 millimeter threaded bottom bracket shell and front and rear through axles. So definitely different from the Prospector. Another difference here is this bike is built around a one by with a max 38 tooth chain ring up front and boost spacing. So you've got a 110 millimeter spaced fork and a 148 millimeter spaced rear end. With the drop bars and a one by drivetrain, if you build this bike up from the frame, this bike is a great candidate for mullet drivetrains. And if you wanna learn what a mullet drivetrain is, there's a link below with all of the details and all of the styles of mullet drivetrains that you can do. Logan put this together and it is a fantastic resource. The frame also comes with a 27.2 diameter seat post. And in this case, it comes with the dropper post, which is internally routed. This build is specced with 2.3 inch tires. However, the bike can fit up to 2.5 inch tires in the 29er diameter. And it also can fit 27.5 by three inch tires. Looking at the clearance of this bike, both on the fork and the rear end, you'll notice that it has quite a bit of clearance. And this is really important for not only mud clearance, but obviously being able to fit that 2.5 inch tire. You're probably asking yourself, can I run a 2.6 inch tire? I haven't tested it, but you probably can. That being said, if you are running into some mud, it's probably not a good idea. The fork here is a 440 millimeter axle to crown, and it's a 55 millimeter offset fork, which will make it a little bit challenging to find some sort of a carbon alternative. The frame is not suspension corrected, but you probably can find some sort of a gravel suspension fork in that range to fit it. So finally, I was always curious if Daniel was going to launch another tumbleweed bike in his lineup, because because, well, the Prospector definitely covers a wide spectrum, but this makes sense, you know, a drop bar adventure forward bike. It's an adventure forward brand. And Daniel definitely spent a lot of time with this bike. You can tell not only with the design, but also the ride quality. There's a lot more to just how a bike looks, but also how it feels and how it rides. And we'll get into that here shortly. All right, so talking about the fit of this bike. So this is an extra medium. Yeah, you heard me right, an extra medium, not an extra large or an extra small, an extra medium. And that is an awesome thing. Daniel definitely realized that there is a difficult spot between medium and large. So I'm five, nine and a half, and I always fall, no matter what company it is, in between a medium and large. I just never know what size to get. So I always size down so I have better maneuverability and just a better feel of the bike. Taking a look at the frame, it does come with this sloping top tube here. So this is going to help with standover height, especially with smaller folks uh, on smaller frames. This is a really nice thing to have. 
Not to mention it also allows you to run a larger dropper post, uh, and we'll get into this, but this is a 125 millimeter dropper post and it really makes this bike ride that much better. This extra medium has a 382 millimeter reach and a 630 millimeter stack height, which, well, is quite a bit. So this bike was not designed to reinvent the wheel. Obviously, it's a drop bar mountain bike. It actually kind of rides and feels very similar to some other bikes that I've pedaled before, like the Kona Sutra ULTD, the Salsa Fargo, and even the Salsa Cutthroat for that matter, even though they are different frame materials. The top tube here is 575 millimeters. Your head tube angle is at 69 degrees. You have a 450 millimeter chain stay and a 63.5 millimeter bottom bracket drop. So those numbers for the most part are very similar to those bikes that I just mentioned. But the difference here is that bottom bracket drop. The bottom bracket is just slightly higher than those bikes in general. The higher bottom bracket on this bike not only gives this bike a little bit more trail, which in my opinion gives this bike a little bit more stability over some other bikes in this category, it also reduces pedal strikes. And sure, it is raising your center of gravity a little bit more, but it's really hard to notice on the bike. All right, so talking about the components a little bit of this bike briefly. So there are some good components or some components that I like on this bike and there are some components I don't like. But in general at $3,875 for this build right here, excluding the rack, it's a pretty decent value. So starting with the wheels, this is probably the best component on this bike. What you're getting here are some DT Swiss 350 hubs, which are fantastic. And you're also getting a 30 millimeter internal rim with rim and these are the race face arc 30s and these are great rims and i think that these rims paired with the proper tire pressure paired with these maxis icon 2.35 tires the wheel set is a great complement to this bike it's not only going to be able to create a little bit more comfort but it also gives you a little bit more sure footedness foot footedness sure footing yeah, anyways, these wheels are great. I'm a big fan. So talking about the drivetrain now, so uh, you've got rival levers up top here and a GX rear derailleur, an 1152 cassette, and then paired with that 32 tooth chain ring up front. This was accomplished by using that Ratio Technology 12 speed drop bar shifter kit. And we actually did a review on this. And if you're interested in checking that out, it is linked below. So this is a 520% range, which, for the most part is going to get you anywhere you need, uh, excluding some crazy climbs and then you might find yourself spun out, but it's a good time to just take a load off and not spin your bike. The rival levers, there's nothing to write home about, but it's a quality lever that has been proven to be durable and I've used these levers for a while now and I have nothing really bad to say about them outside of the fact that maybe sometimes that shifting, especially once your hands are a little bit more fatigued, is a little bit more challenging. This left hand lever actually actuates the dropper post. When you find yourself needing to actually press the lever to drop your post, it's in a really good spot. I feel like that is probably the best spot for a dropper lever on drop bars. Another component that's fantastic on this bike is the dropper post. Not only does this dropper post add just another element to the bike, it gives you a lot more confidence, but it's the adjustable PNW Rainier dropper post. You can actually take out 30 millimeters of dropper travel, which really helps out with bike packing when you have a really big seat pack on the back and you tend to actually hit that seat pack on your rear tire, you can take away a handful of millimeters of travel so that you can avoid that. A few things that I dislike about this build kit. First off, it's the Tektro mechanical brakes. I get it. This bike, you know, world traveler, you want to use a mechanical brake. But honestly, I actually did a video on this just a few weeks ago about mechanical brakes, hydraulic brakes. What's the best brake for bike packing? And I've had zero issues with hydraulic brakes in the past. Using these Tetro brakes, honestly, when I'm braking and I really need to stop, it just catches really quickly and just, it almost makes me want to go over the bar. There is no feathering capability, so it feels on or off. So the other thing I couldn't get into was these PNW Coast handlebars. These are 52 centimeter handlebars. So the width really wasn't too much of a problem. They just are somewhat of a harsh aluminum compared to say my Richie Venture Max extra large bars, which I would put on this bike instantly. All right, so when I'm testing bikes, I normally bring these bikes to the same spot because it helps me compare how the bikes ride. But the Stargazer, it wanted more. And by the end of the test period, I found myself riding a lot of trails that I normally would ride my mountain bike on. So talking about climbing, whether you're out of the saddle hammering up a gravel road or you're slowly climbing some switchbacks, 
This bike remains planted, but it's also not that slow at climbing either. This bike kept me motivated to hammer down on the pedals up hills, mainly because it wasn't working against me like some other drop bar mountain bikes in this category have. And that was the overall theme as far as climbing was concerned. It's not the fastest bike uphill, but it's hands down not the slowest. When you get it on flat gravel or pavement, it's not working against you. And that's something that is super important because you're probably doing that more times than not. So where this bike shines is descending. And sure, while it's good at descending pavement or gravel roads, this bike really wants to be on single track and descending single track and has the capability of doing so at a very high level. I would describe this bike as actually being rather playful and almost even flickable. It's so sure-footed, it's planted, that front end can still maneuver rather quickly but it's not too twitchy. And once this bike got going at high speeds, it was extremely stable and confidence inspiring, even going down some rocky single track. Sure, the chunkiest of single track, you're going to have to slow down, drop that dropper post, and try to maneuver around some of those rocks, especially with that rigid fork. But the other notable feature with this bike is the ride quality isn't harsh. And sure, it's a steel frame, it's not supposed to be harsh, but it is extra comfortable. So paired with these wheels, these bigger volume tires, uh, larger rims, the design of this frame and the steel, I really think all of that adds to being a really comfortable ride quality on that chunky trail or chunky gravel road descents. So I definitely characterize this bike as not only extremely fun, but definitely balanced. Talking about this bike being loaded down, just to be transparent, I did take it out on a day ride with it loaded. That being said, I just had a newborn, and so I really can't be out more than two hours. My newborn is three weeks old, not even three weeks old, but it did ride really well while it was loaded. And I think this bike would be a great candidate for even some rougher routes, uh, maybe not single track focused routes, but rougher gravel routes, two track. It would definitely be a great candidate for the Great Divide mountain bike route. It's got mounts galore, but not overly done, but you could fit two bottles within the frame and a bottle on the down tube here. It has three pack mounts on the fork that are angled, so you can't fit that Ortlieb fork pack if you were wondering. It has front and rear rack and fender mounts. And as you see here, I mounted the T-Rack on this bike and you can order the T-Rack for an additional charge when you purchase the bike. So Logan did a very good comparison in his written review with this bike and a handful of drop bar mountain bikes. But if I was to compare the two bikes that are most similar, it'd be the Kona Sutra ULTD because they've got steel forks, a steel frame, and pretty similar geometry. So if I was to pick the ULTD or the Stargazer here, it would definitely be the Stargazer because it climbs just as good as the ULTD, but it descends much better. It's more sure-footed, especially at higher speeds. It's stiffer, snappier, and I attribute a lot of that to not only the frame material, but the design and Daniel's dedication of three years working on this Stargazer. So the Stargazer is currently available for pre-sale. It's available in Starry Night or Bone, which is this color here. The frame set includes the frame, fork, through axles and seat post clamp, and that comes in at $1,350. And if you're looking for this complete build, you can get that for $3,875. So if you have any comments or questions regarding the Tumbleweed Stargazer, leave it in the comment section below. I'll definitely get back to you. I need to get out of here because it's gonna rain on me. So as always, thank you all so much for watching, and until next time, pedal further.